Here I am inside Power Automate. That gives me lots of templates to get started from, as well as a list of all the connectors of the 375 different connectors that I can get started with. In our case, I'm just going to go ahead and create a new flow. To do that, I'll go to Create and create an automated flow. Now, there are different ways I could create a flow, including an instant flow, schedule flow, etc. In this case, we will just create a flow that gets triggered based on an event. In fact, those events could be coming from any of those 375 connectors or any custom connector. And here, what I could say is when a new email shows up, I want this flow to be triggered. Let's call this control so invoices. Now, when a new email arrives, I want this flow to execute. This is the beginning of any flow, which is the notion of a trigger. In this case, this is it event-based trigger. Now, I don't want it on all the emails. I want to specify some filters that only trigger this flow whenever these conditions are met. In fact, I want this trigger to execute only if there is a attachment in the email. I can also give it a subject filter to say only trigger this flow whenever there's an invoice in the title. That's it. Now, this flow will trigger anytime there's an email that contains invoice in the title and has an attachment. The next thing I want to do is go on and take the extract the invoice from the email and send it over to AI Builder for it to extract the contents of the form. Now, AI Builder provides out of the box experiences for creating AI models for different business needs. It could be category classification, entity extraction from different documents. Forms processing, this is the one we're going to use, etc. And there are many available out of the box directly. Let's use forms processing. The first thing I need to do is specify the name of this model. Next, AI Builder walks me through the set of steps that are necessary for me to initialize that model. And the way I do that is to add documents, which are sample documents I can upload from my machine. Here are those five documents. And all I need to do is upload those documents to the service. Once those documents have been uploaded, I can ask the system to analyze the contents of these documents. As it's doing content analysis, it's looking at the overall structure, it's detecting fields, and is extracting field values from that structure. Now the analysis is complete. So here, what you see is the model behind AI Builder is sophisticated enough to pick out key value pairs, for example, this invoice, as well as tables. So it uses OCR and structured understanding to be able to extract tabular information. So very quickly, I'm going to select all the fields and I'm going to unselect a few fields that I don't, I don't want. I can also go ahead and do custom tagging for different regions and give them you know, give these different names. But in my case, I'm just going to leave the defaults. The next step I need to go through is ask the model to be trained. Once the training is complete, all I need to do is publish this model, which will make it available for me to embed inside my automations or my applications. There we go. Now let's use this intelligence that's locked up inside this AI builder model from my automation. Here we are back in flow. And I can take a look at all the AI builder models I have access to. In this case, there's one that I just created called Contoso Invoices. This action can take different types of documents. In my case, I'll be sending in PDF just for the sake of this demo. So let's select that. Now the next field will be what is the document I want to send over to AI Builder for it to extract from. And in our case, that will be the attachment that's coming down from the trigger. And what you notice is as soon as I click uh, attachment contents, the flow designer is going to recognize that there could in fact be multiple attachments in an email and automatically give me a loop that loops through all of those attachments that are coming from an email. And for each one of those attachments, it will push that attachment over to AI Builder and extract the contents from those documents. The next thing I want to do is have the contents of this extraction be sent over to a Teams channel for a human to make a call 
on whether to approve this processing of the invoice or not. And the way I do that is just like I do with any other connector. Inside Power Automate, I'll look for Teams. In this case, I'll post a choice of options to the user. The first option is going to be whether you want to approve, next reject, and finally process manually. I'll give it some text for the message itself. Now in this case, I have the power of AI at my fingertips and I can use the fields that AI Builder has extracted from the invoice and feed it in directly to the team's message. And the way I do that is simply to look at the dynamic content that's coming from the previous steps or from the output of AI Builder and use the fields. That's it, I've now just configured a message to be sent to Teams. Now the output of this Teams call will be a response that I received back from the user. And in this case, Flow allows me to build a switch that I could use for determining which path do I take next. Let's take a look at the approved case. Now in this case, I want to enter this data into an application that has no APIs. And to do that, I'll use a feature in Power Automate called UI Flows. Now in this case, let's go ahead and create a very simple UI flow. Here the Power Automate desktop launches that allows me to create automation directly on my desktop. Power Automate Desktop is an evolution of the Win Automation product. And as you can see on the left-hand side on the toolbox, you have a variety of different actions available for you to do UI automation on different applications, web automations on different browsers, terminal emulations, etc. I could drag and drop controls directly onto the canvas, but in our case, I'll go ahead and launch the recorder to record the activities of the user. I can now start recording my application. Once done, I can go take a look at the recording itself. Now in this case, I want to use dynamic variables that I can feed in later on at runtime. The way I do that is by creating the notion of an input variable. I'm going to create the first one, which is called invoice contact. Give it a sample value. Format the external name and the description. I created my first input variable and I'll create three more. Now that I've defined the input variable, I'm going to use these instead of the hard coded values per action. And I'll do this for the rest of the actions as well. And finally, I'm going to introduce the action to run the application, which is the invoice processing app. There are many options available for each of these actions, including wait for application to load. And in all the actions, you also have ability to specify on error handling. In this case, I can specify various error handling specific to this type of actions. All I need to do at this point is save this script directly up to the Power Automate service. Once the script is saved, I'm back here in the Power Automate service where I can see all the four input variables that I've specified are now available for me as placeholders I can pass in to this action to execute the UI flow. In addition, I can also select whether I want this automation to run in an attended mode or unattended. In this case, I'm going to select attended. And now I will feed in the data I've been extracted from the AI Builder model again. That's all, I've built my end-to-end -end invoice processing flow. Let's go through and give it a whirl. This is the invoice I'll be emailing over to that mailbox. Let's go ahead and send the mail. And when I switch to flow, very shortly, you'll see a message from the Power Automate service that contains data that's been extracted 
using AI Builder. Here's that message. And all I need to do is make a decision on this. In this case, I'll select Approve and Submit. Now, in my case, we have wired this up for us to demonstrate how attended automation would work on my machine. Of course, in, in the usual scenario, I will probably have a separate machine that is getting invoked on an unattended basis. But here, what we'll see is very shortly, this application has launched and it's now passing in all the information that's been extracted by the invoice, and that's it. What you see in this flow is an end-to-end -end holistic automation platform that allows you to call APIs to wait for emails, AI to process the invoices, route a message to the Teams user for them to make a decision, and then once they've decided to launch RPA or UI automation to be able to enter all that information into an application that has no APIs.